Good morning. The sun technically rose at about 4, I think 42. Um, this morning it is now about 6.30 and as you can tell the color of the sunset is still ever so slightly on the edge of the skies. Decided to get up really early this morning and shoot a garden tour because we're in the middle of a heat wave and uh, it's 20 right now, 20 degrees Celsius. It's going to hit somewhere closer to 40 um, and uh, I figured now would be a better light and a more comfortable temperature. So here we go. So as you can see there's a couple of extra structures up. I'll talk you through those in a minute. Um, I'm not sure exactly what temperature tomatoes drop their blossoms, but I will uh, look into that and post the number on the screen here. They are definitely blooming, and I hope some of those blooms actually get pollinated and uh, survive. This transplanted corn is doing so well. I am super impressed. And these are the direct sown ones beside, and our little variegated nasturtiums down there. They just look really good. Also, I think every garden should have chives. Um, it's always covered in bees, except, of course, at six in the morning. So, with the heat wave, um, we have been watering fairly decently and trying to do it early in the morning. Actually, I will go ahead and run these soaker hoses after I've done filming. But the potatoes are looking really good. Um, there's another batch of potatoes there. So peas are one of the cold weather crops that don't necessarily love heat. These are a slightly more bluish coloring um, and they seem to handle it a little bit better. They've not shown any signs of stress. They're not super soft or wilting at the, at the tops. So I think they're fine. They're definitely growing. Um, beans are hot weather crops. They'll be fine. Brassicas can definitely show some stress or uh, try to bolt. I've never seen that before, but this is a rather historic heat wave. These are uh, broccolini, which are kind of bolting anyway because you're trying to collect the flower heads. And then the cabbages back here. Uh, we've got... Um, Melissa Savoy cabbage and some extra broccolini under that cover. Now because these are under a cover to protect them from bugs, they're um, holding the heat in a lot more. And so I've created this tent to keep a little bit more of the sun off of them so that they don't cook under the covers. Because I don't want to have to remove the covers and have the cabbage moths move in because I've seen them flying around already. Um, Again, the beans are fine. These peas aren't showing any stress, but I am going to show you how I covered my snow peas because they were starting to wilt at the tops. Um, also make note, if you are harvesting lettuce at this time uh, and you are also in a heat wave, water, um, water them the night before and harvest them in the morning. And if they're still bitter, I will show you a hack for that a little bit later on. Tomatoes are doing really well, I'm impressed. Unfortunately, the suckers are running away from me. So what I'm going to do in this case is we've got two branches. This is actually the sucker. This was the central vine. So I'm not going to take off the whole sucker because we've got these flowers on here. I'm actually just going to pinch the tip out of that. I'm not sure if you can see. So that's the growing tip there. So that means that, and as long as I keep the suckers on this branch clean, that branch isn't going to grow any longer and should not produce, um, or shouldn't, shouldn't be an extra thing to support. So I can actually go ahead and wind this one. Sorry, I'm doing this one-handed here. 
back around so that I have a single lead still. Uh, so if your suckers get away from you, you don't have to take them completely off. Um, if they're rather small, then I will. But if they're big enough, to, oh no, that's horrible. I just went ahead and snapped that branch. I'm just going to put it back together and you'd be amazed what will heal. But uh, you don't have to take the whole sucker off. Um, if it's quite a big one, like this, like this one here, I might leave it and pinch the tip out of it. But I try to get them a little bit smaller, like these ones, and pull those off. Now I'm only removing suckers on indeterminate plants or vining type, type plants. They'll produce um, uh, along the stem. With indeterminate plants, um, a lot of romas and a lot of hybrid production types, um, you don't want to prune the suckers off because that's where the majority of your fruit will actually end up being from. And these broccolis are actually starting to have some nice little heads. They've come a long way in the last couple of days even with this heat. This one will be ready to harvest in a day or two maybe. And as you can see with the spreading broccoli, or broccolini, it's going to also make broccolis on the axis of every branch. So this can be quite productive. I've got quite a few of them. And I've got a green variety here as well. So they're looking really, really good. Onions seem to handle the heat pretty well as long as they have sufficient water. Um, carrots don't struggle too badly. I do actually have a couple of zucchini in this here tire. Now the tires here, um, I've just wanted to extend my growing space a little bit and because these are in black tires, they heat up a little bit, they heat up the soil earlier in the spring. And so I can have some earlier transplants put in here and they don't suffer so much. So this one's actually got two zucchinis on it. They're maybe like Sharpie size right now, but uh, in a couple days they'll be ready to eat. So that's very exciting. Sorry about the wind. I hope that's not too noisy. Oh, my tarp is taking off on me. I'm gonna have to fix that. So again, here I've actually covered the south west side of the cabbages with uh, this tarp, which I'm going to have to find a new way to keep on here. Uh, these, these cabbages are doing quite well, and uh, I was concerned that they were going to cook under the cover. So. So I'm basically creating a tent underneath here, which will provide shade for the plants, prevent them from getting too badly heated. Oh dear. These tomatoes are looking pretty good. Definitely need some water. Starting to flower. And these are the determinants that I've got. Um, actually, I think that's the only determinant in there. The Amish paste I need to look into. I can't remember. But, uh, yeah. These guys are definitely blooming. And then my snow peas. Yesterday I was having a look at the snow peas and they were looking severely wilted. They look a lot better now already. And um, they were looking severely wilted. They're, they're really a cold season crop. They were not designed for this weather. So I've covered them just by putting a set of uh, burlap over the, the posts already in the ground for them. And then I've, I'll show you from the other side. Basically put a second set of posts here 
and drove them in at a bit of an angle. Now they've sort of flopped a little bit because the ground is very hard. So, again, there's a little bit of a, it's just a little bit of shade for them. Sweet corn's doing all right. Needs weeding. It's actually catching up fairly well. Um, and scarlet runners are starting to want to vine and flower. Little zucchini starting up. Overall, I think the garden is looking really good for this time of year. The pumpkin patch is looking pretty good. We've got peppers and watermelons under here. Um, now this shade cloth, or this um, fabric, is fairly loose on here, and it's also um, letting the breeze through quite nicely, so I'm not too worried about them overheating, because they can handle quite a bit of heat. And the um, shade cloth will actually help to give them a little bit of protection from the extreme sun. <sighs> so, I've got some peppers in there. You can see some freshly come up watermelons, seeds, and there's the uh, transplanted one. He's looking pretty good. I'm impressed. Hopefully get some melons this year. It's uh, the wildflower garden. Wildflower garden is actually in full flax blooming right now. There's also a lot of weeds in here um, and a little bit of alfalfa and yarrow and of course clover. I don't I don't argue with clover. I don't fight with clover. Um, this is a weed. It's as you can tell, it, it uh, grows fairly readily, but it's very um, small and stringy in here because it's so crowded. Um, but the flax is definitely absolutely glorious, and the bees love the, the, the wallflower patch. Birds too, incidentally. Have not yet seen any signs of nesting in our wildflower patch, but I'll uh, keep you posted. So we actually did do a pretty good general overall weeding in the pumpkin patch um, last week before we went camping. Unfortunately, the weeds have grown since, um, but the pumpkins are doing really well. I've also pulled the cover back off of um, the, the remaining cover that still was on um, off of the smaller plants. Again, to protect them from overheating because there's not a lot of opportunity for air to travel underneath that cover when it's laying flat on the ground and uh, with that kind of heat you don't really want to be cooking your plants. Look at this guy though. He's just about ready to begin blooming. So with pumpkins you're going to see lots and lots of male flowers um, on the vines before you see any sign of um, a female flower is the flower that will actually produce your pumpkin. Um, you can see these are all just just flower buds. There's no bulb at the base of the flower um, and that's how you can tell whether it's a male flower or a female flower. It'll usually produce, um, in my experience, about three or four feet of vine and male flowers and then it'll start producing female flowers after the males have started blooming already.
Look at this painted mountain corn, guys. It's uh, it's not super tall, but it has handled its transplant fairly well. And it's got a really thick stalk, really intense color. I'm really looking forward to seeing what those guys look like. Excuse the crows, they're just having a, a little morning call at each other. The perennial bed is coming along nicely. So the iris has just finished blooming. The uh, dwarf dianthus are really, really flowering beautifully. And it looks like we'll be getting lilies very soon. As well as delphinium. They're starting to make their spires. Also got a rose over here that's blooming. It smells gorgeous, by the way. It actually looks like this little guy over here. He, uh, the top of him died off pretty good, but he grew back from the base and he's got a little rosebud on there as well. It's exciting. This is a little yellow rose. It's also very, very pretty and very aromatic. And there's our zone four wisteria, come back from winter. And a new clematis that's wanting to bloom. And I, I don't even know what this little pink thing is called, but it's one of my favorite um, bedding plants. So we've started putting a path in. It's not quite complete, but it's coming in. These are my winter tomatoes. I'm not sure if you recall. You can definitely see, see some hail damage. There's some spots and speckles on the fruit as well as the leaves. Um, we did get another round of hail last week, but it came with lots of rain, so I didn't complain too much. This is a flower called Night Scented Stock. During the day, those flowers um, sort of fold themselves up and it looks so much like a weed that you're tempted to pull it every time you look at it, but it sets off such a beautiful aroma uh, at night or early in the morning that uh, it's well worth having anywhere you like to sit. And the annuals and flowers are starting to fill in their homes. Uh, I've got quite a bit of weeding to do in this bed, but it's encouraging to see the plants starting to fill their, fill their spots. And the yarrow is beginning to bloom fairly well. It's, uh, it's a beautiful mix of colors we've got here. Um, once this bigger, more mature section begins to bloom it'll just be a wash with with color i really actually really really love that little salmon colored one and the snow in summer is also in bloom And the lovage is trying to make flowers, so I think what I'm going to do um, is probably cut back the flower stalks at least halfway. Because, um, as you can see, this is wanting to flower. Uh, this is also wanting to flower. And I think it might try and grow from there as well if I don't cut it all the way down. So, I might have to sacrifice a little bit of lovage because I don't think I want those going to seed. Um, my one mature raspberry back there is covered in um, begun and finished blooms. So looking forward to some raspberries. I've also been watching uh, inside my cozy coats for any heat stress on my plants and I end up taking them off of my sweet potatoes which were covered in um, aphids actually and looking a little bit little bit heat stressed so 
I'll show you those in a moment. We're starting to get flowers. The hollyhocks are just about to begin blooming. This is going to fill up over the next couple of weeks and just be full of color. And there's our sweet potato number one. So what I did for the aphids is I actually just hose them off. And uh, you can see already, I hosed them off and I didn't put any chemical down because I didn't want to kill any ladybugs that came to eat them. And uh, sure enough, you wash them down and the ladybugs come. And there's the other one. This one's not looking quite as good. It's looking all right, but a little bit more stressed. Um, that one has the bigger leaves for sure. It looks like it was really enjoying its time in the cozy coat. Um, not sure if you can see those little spikes of white flowers. That's uh, the new apple trees we planted this spring. Because they were bare root, they were a little bit behind the schedule of our other apple trees, so they don't have any um, pollinators blooming at the same time. They won't be bearing fruit. And since they just got transplanted, I was going to pick off any fruit that they did try to produce anyway. But it is nice to see them in bloom, know that they're healthy. Rhubarb in a heat wave is going to be extremely bitter. So uh, use at own risk, I would say. Look at this plum tree. Give you some contrast here. This, this whole branch is new growth from there this spring. Isn't that impressive? That's like a foot and a half. I'm really hoping it uh, does well here. And the new growth is such a pretty color to it. And our hedge is coming along nicely up here, actually. And I've planted some flowers on this side of it. You can see there's some columbines. And this is an onion, an onion bulb that actually just got replanted here after I found it one winter. Now you might ask why I'm leaving the flowers, because normally when you're growing onions for storage, you cut off any flower stalks. Um, if your onions flower or put on flower stalks, they tend to um, put all their energy into the flower and the bulb um, is damaged for storage. But this onion has been here a long time. I'm not planning on using it for eating but if I can harvest seed from it, that would be great because onion seed is um, not terribly uh, storageable, if that makes sense. Um, the good viability of the seed is only about a year, and after that it drops by about half every year that you have it, so it's not, it's not great. So if I can harvest some of my own seed fresh, then I don't have to buy a new packet every year. Uh, these um, alpine strawberries um, had pretty much died back, and you can see the, the remnant of what was there. But uh, they've come in, and they've begun to bloom, and they're beginning to bear fruit. They're not ripening yet, but that's fine. Um, in this heat, we're just checking them every day to make sure there's no ripe fruit on them, because the uh, fruit will go off very quickly in this temperature. This is a Cotone ester hedge behind the columbines here. And I'm not sure if you can tell, but it's got lots and lots of little flowers and the bees and the nectar drinking wasps are all over this thing once it gets a little bit warmer. So there you go, guys. So uh, if you have a spinach crop, and you're about to go into a heat wave, I would recommend that you go ahead and harvest that right away. Um, I harvested all my spinach, it was starting to bolt. Um, so it's going to be a little bit more bitter. I'm not going to be using it fresh, I'll just be freezing that to uh, cook with. And the cooking will help to lose a little bit of that um, bitterness. Also, if you're harvesting lettuce, again, if you can water um, in the evening and pick it in the morning, it'll be sweeter. Uh, if you find that it's still bitter, what you can do is you can actually um, soak it in a lukewarm 
um, wash with a little bit of baking soda. So I'll usually do maybe two tablespoons of baking soda to um, two or so inches of water in my sink and then let your lettuce soak in that for about 10 minutes, rinse, uh, dry, and taste it then and it should be quite a bit sweeter. So if your lettuce is tasting bitter, do not fear, you can fix that. Um, I hope that works for you, it's worked for me. And uh, that's our garden tour for this week. Thanks for watching guys, we'll see ya.